Chandrayaan-3, India's ambitious lunar mission, will lift off from the Satish Dhawan Space Centre in Sriharikota on the 14th of July. If successful, India will become the fourth country to achieve the remarkable feat of landing a spacecraft on the surface of the Moon. As we count down to the big launch day, here are five facts about Chandrayaan-3. Chandrayaan-3 is a continuation of India's previous lunar mission, Chandrayaan-2, which ended in failure and tears. The objective is to demonstrate India's capability of soft landing on the moon by delivering a lander and a rover to the lunar surface. During Chandrayaan-2, the lander crash-landed during descent due to a technical failure. India will be hoping to join an elite list of nations who have actually managed to land on the moon that is the United States, erstwhile Soviet Union, and China. The actual launch vehicle Mark III is a three-stage medium-lift launch vehicle. Christened as the Bahubali of rockets, it's the most powerful rocket ever developed by ISRO. This is what will be used to launch the Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft. LVM-3 consists of two solid fuel boosters and a liquid fuel core stage powering it. The solid fuel boosters provide the initial thrust, while the liquid fuel core stage provides the sustained thrust to propel the rocket into orbit. The spacecraft consists of three parts, the lander module, the propulsion module and a rover. The integrated spacecraft weighs around 3,900 kgs. The main function of the propulsion module is to carry the lander module from launch vehicle injection till the final lunar 100km circular polar orbit and separate it. The lander will make a soft landing at a specific site on the moon and deploy the rover. The rover in turn will carry out chemical analysis of the lunar surface. The rover will be moving only within a limited range, that is within the site of the lander's cameras. All data collected by the rover will be transmitted first to the rover and then to the orbiter and then back to Earth. ISRO is targeting a soft landing sometime in the middle of August. Landing dates are determined based on the availability of sunlight at a particular landing spot. Sunlight is essential for the lunar lander and rover to utilize their solar panels and generate power. ISRO has designed the Chandrayaan-3 lander and rover to function for 14 Earth days, which amounts to one lunar day. After that, it will be a period of 14 Earth days of darkness at the landing site. So the rover and lander will not be able to recharge their batteries during that period. While there have been several moon landings, Chandrayaan-3 will be the first to land on the South Pole of the Moon. So a successful landing of Chandrayaan-3 on the Moon's South Pole will be a demonstration of our technical prowess and spacefaring ambitions. The Lunar South Pole has long held the interest of scientists and space experts because there is a possibility of presence of water there. The rocks and soil in this region could provide clues to the early solar system. This will be the first time that any test would be conducted on the South Pole so any data and conclusions drawn are set to be studied keenly across the world.